welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be taking a deeper dive into the best blueprints for the IKEA Stybar 4 button switch. Now I released a video for the Stybar 8 months ago and if you haven't seen it then it's available in the pop-up above. At the time I walked through the installation of a single blueprint that gave you some basic functions but there are many different blueprints in the community store so I thought I'd run through some of the most popular ones. The main benefit of this is that with some recent changes in Home Assistant, some of these no longer work. So let's get those fingers blue and talk through what we want to achieve. So I'm going to try and keep this as simple as possible. I'll be running through five different blueprints that were originally designed for the IKEA Stybar 2001, the white version, or 2002, the stainless steel version. Both versions are fundamentally the same device, just with different faceplates. Three of the blueprints offer ZHA, and the other two offer Zigbee to MQTT. We'll be testing for three different criteria. First, that the lights can be turned on and off. Secondly, that the light's intensity can be faded up or down, with bonus marks for those that have a loop, so that you can hold down the button and the lights will increase or decrease. And the third will be if the left and right buttons come with specified defined functionality such as color change or warmth of light change or can be assigned to an action. So we can test with ZHA. Let's add the sty bar to Home Assistant through the ZHA integration. Navigate to Settings, Devices and Services, Add Integration, Add Zigbee Device. Now open up the back of your sty bar button. Inside, you will see a pairing button at the top. Press this five times in quick succession. The red light at the top of the device will now start flashing to signify that it is now in pairing mode. Your Stybar will now show up as a device. Give it an appropriate name, in my case, Stybar. Optionally give it an area, in my case, System. The Stybar has now been successfully added to Home Assistant as a ZHA device. To check, press the back arrow in the top left-hand corner Select Devices in the top menu. Search for Stybar. You should now see your Stybar device. Our first blueprint is by Multi. This is a derivation of a blueprint that was created by Sphereshot, who derived it from Frank, who is a developer at Home Assistant. Link in the description to the documentation. It had updates made to it in October 2023 and comments on it at the start of 2024. Its features are, sure pressing the top button will allow the light to be turned on to the last brightness level, although there is a force brightness that will allow you to set this level. Sure pressing the bottom button will turn off the lights. You can also assign functions for short and long presses to the left and right buttons. To install, press the link in the description for the integration. Edit the link for your home assistant using the pencil to the right of the URL. Once you confirm the URL is correct, press the open link. Now press the preview. Confirm you wish to import the blueprint by pressing the import blueprint. The blueprint will show up in your blueprints as ZHA IKEA 4 button remote for lights with a file name starting with multi. Now press the three dots to the right of the blueprint. Press create automation. In the remote field, use the drop down and select Stybar. In the lights section, select the area or the device you wish to control. In my case, dining room backlight. Now I don't want to force a brightness to turn on, as I wish to test if the resume to previous level is working. I'll leave the hold time at 0.5 seconds, as this works well, and I won't set any assignments to the left and right buttons. In the bottom right hand corner, press the save button, give it an appropriate name, and press the rename button. Now let's test it out. On the left hand side is our dining room backlight. On our right hand side is our sty bar. Pressing the on button, results in the light turning on and a logbook entry will be made for the action. Pressing the off button at the bottom results in our dining room turning off. Pressing and holding our button will increase the light by 10% each time. Pressing and holding the bottom button will cause our light to decrease by 10% each time. Since we have not assigned any actions to our left and right button, we will not be testing this, but all the functions documented work smoothly. The next Stybar Blueprint contender is one from Jeff KRZ and is available from the Blueprint Community Exchange. Links in the description. 
This blueprint is a derivation on a Nero 1987 blueprint for the IKEA 5 button switch. Its claim features are short pressing the top button will turn on the lights, short pressing the bottom button will turn off the lights, but there is no resume to the last lighting brightness. Long pressing the top button will increase the brightness and long pressing the bottom button will decrease the brightness. The left and right buttons can be used to change the warmth of the light, but not the color. So this might be a good option for dimmable but non-RGB lights that can have their warmth changed. You do not get the options to assign actions to any other buttons, so this is a simple but effective blueprint. To install, press the link in the description for the integration. Edit the link for your Home Assistant using the pencil to the right of the URL. Press the Open button. Import your blueprint by pressing the Preview button. Confirm you wish to import the blueprint by pressing the Import Blueprint. The blueprint will show up with the name of ZHA IKEA Stybar Warm White Lights with a file name starting with Jeff KRZ. Now don't forget to disable the previous automation if you are trying a few of these. You can do this from within the automations menu on the top line. To create an automation based on this blueprint, press the three dots to the right of the blueprint. Select Create Automation. In the Stybar remote control field, use the drop down and select your Stybar button. In the light section, you can either use the drop down to search for your light, or if you have a good naming convention, then you can type light as the domain, dot, and then the room where your light is could be controlled. In my case, the dining room back light, and select. There are no further configurations options available for this blueprint, so press save in the bottom right hand corner. Give it an appropriate name, and press rename. Now let's test it out. Press the top button, and the lights will turn on. Press and hold the top button and the lights will increase in brightness. Press and hold the bottom button and the lights will decrease in brightness. Pressing the bottom button once will turn the lights off. Moving across into the temperature gauge, pressing the right button, the light should turn colder, which is a bluer type of light. Pressing the left button, the light should turn warmer, which is a redder type of light. So all functions work as documented and work smoothly. The next ZHA Stybar Blueprint is from Cybdis and is available from the Blueprint Community Exchange, links in the description. It's a derivation of our first blueprint from Multi, but adds the ability to turn on or off a switch based on the pressing of the top or bottom buttons of the controller. As this is essentially the same base functionality as the blueprint from Multi, but with one added function, I won't run through the installation and testing of the integration. User cases for this blueprint might be when you want to turn on a light, but you also might wish to trigger an alarm to activate or to take a camera snapshot. I personally don't have this requirement, but it's an interesting user case. In my testing for this blueprint, it performed exactly the same as the multi blueprint. However, it did activate and deactivate a switch based on the press of the top or bottom buttons. So all functions worked as documented and worked smoothly. Next, we come to two blueprints that were specifically built for Zigbee to MQTT. The first one of these is by a developer called Kevin Cosmos, links in the description to the documentation. This is a simple blueprint that provides mapping and actions for the short and long presses for all four buttons. However, it doesn't allow for direct control of any lights, doesn't allow for looped dimming of the lights, as this was not a requirement for the developer. I'll put a link in the description to the blueprint, just in case this is the type of blueprint that you are looking for, but it falls short of our requirements, so I won't go into the installation or testing of this blueprint. Our next blueprint is specifically for Zigbee to MQTT and was developed by Roberto80, links in the description to the documentation. Now, if this is the first blueprint that promises the full functionality of our requirements. It promises to allow the ability to turn on or off the lights, allow for smooth increases and decreases of the brightness based on a hold of the button, the ability to change the color of the lights based on the press of the left or right button, and the ability to increase or decrease the temperature of the lights with a long press of the left or right buttons. Now, if you are trying a few of these blueprints, remember to delete the Stybar device from the ZHA before installing the Zigbee to MQTT. Also to disable or delete the previous installed automations so they don't conflict with the new automations you might create. 
you can leave the blueprints as they are not actioned unless they are in an automation. I'll assume you have removed the sty bar from your ZHA. Now to add your sty bar to Zigbee to MQTT, you're going to need Zigbee to MQTT installed. If you don't have it installed, then go watch the video in the pop-up above and come back to this video once installed. Navigate to Zigbee to MQTT in the sidebar menu. Press permit to join on the top of the screen. Press the pairing button five times in quick succession. Your sty bar will appear and run through its initialization process. This might take some time, so be patient as it needs to complete fully. Now press the pencil to the right of the sty bar. Change your name for the friendly name of the device to sty bar and toggle the switch for update home assistant entity IDs and press rename. Now press the link for the integration in the description below. Edit the link for your home assistant URL using the pencil to the right. Once you have the correct URL, press open link. Import the blueprint for review by pressing preview. Confirm you wish to import the blueprint by pressing import blueprint. The blueprint will now show up in your blueprints as IKEA Stybar Automation Lights with a file name starting with Roberto. Now press the three dots to the right of the blueprint to create the automation. Select Create Automation. Now this automation does not automatically search and allow for easy selection of the Stybar action entity, so we're going to have to enter it ourselves. In the IKEA Stybar 2001-2002 field, type in the start of the entity ID and the Stybar should appear. Now select the sty bar. In the lights section, we need to search for and select the entity of the lights you wish to control. In my case, dining room back lights. Optionally set the force turn on brightness, which sets the brightness of the lights when they are turned on. Also optionally set the brightness, brightness step, and the color temperature. But in my testings, I left these as default. Now press the save button in the bottom right hand corner, give it an appropriate name, and press rename. Now let's go and test. As before, we have the light on the left hand side and the sty bar on the right. Pressing any button on the sty bar is recorded in the logbook correctly. However, no corresponding action is made to the light. I have tested this on several other lights and found that it did work, but not consistently. I will raise this with the developer and see if this is a known issue and if there is a solution that has been found and put in the comments if I get a response. If you try this blueprint, then let us know in the comments what your experiences are. So that's five different blueprints from five different developers across two different Zigbee protocols of ZHA and Zigbee to MQTT. All three ZHA blueprints work perfectly as documented and the two Zigbee to MQTT blueprints fail to perform as documented. Of the ZHA blueprints, I don't need the functionality of switches and I don't need to be able to assign different functions to the buttons outside of the controlling the lights. So for me, the blueprint by Jeff KRS meets the criteria and that's the version I use and recommend. Functional and works perfectly every time, hence has a high partner approval factor. I hope you like the video, maybe consider joining the community and a super thanks or buy me a coffee would be really appreciated. Until the next one, enjoy your trip to Ikea.